In today's project, I will use Edward colored photo edge cockpit parts. Use more metal parts from metallic details. Use much much more metal parts. Use water slide decals and technical stances from Begemoth and much more. So please sit tight and enjoy. Let's get started. Hello all my YouTube friends, welcome to my channel. This video build will be about the Russian high-speed supersonic interceptor, the Mika Angorej MiG-25 Foxbat. I've done a quick review and unboxing for this kit lately, so on a shortcut, let's talk about this kit. This ICM kit is probably the best MiG-25 model available these days. It comes with highly detailed parts such as the cockpit, air intakes, landing gear, wheel wells, jet nozzles and air-to-air -air missiles. The instruction manual contains 83 steps. Every single word step is drawn in detail. The manual also includes four camouflage schemes, two Soviet and Iraqi and Libyan mix from the 80s and 90s. There are two decal sheets. On the first are insignias and identification numbers and on the second are technical stances. Great! I'm super excited! This will be a pleasure to build. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for not missing any new notifications. Ok, let's start with the build. From the start of the build, I will use photo edge metal parts from Edward and metallic details. I bought these metal parts on eBay for a decent price. The Edward instruction manual leads me to destroy some of the nice details and some of the molds must be reduced. I gently cut them out with a chisel and a sharp hobby knife and smooth out the surface with a P600 sandpaper. There are some plastic parts that need to be glued together, like the KM1M ejection seat. Beside the cockpit, I also work on the front and main wheel wells. The Edward and metallic detail accessories have plenty of parts, so I can combine them together. Before I apply the colored cockpit metal parts, I must paint the cockpit and all the small details. I don't have the correct color shade. I had to combine two colors by mixing Gunze Sangyo Mr. Color C666 Bright Green and C34 Sky Blue in a mix ratio of 30 to 70%. For painting small details, I mostly use thin paintbrushes from Trumpeter or Italeri. I also paint the abraded floor from the pilot's feet. In the end, it won't be visible, but I do it anyway. After painting the small details, I dry brush all cockpit parts with a metallic paint, add a layer of clear varnish and apply a dark wash. The wash will dry out after a few minutes. It can be removed by a cotton swab and a odorless amino thinner. Now I can add the Edward colored cockpit metal parts. I finally managed to mix the right color shade. I am satisfied with the result.
Some of the parts, like these throttle pedals, are very very tiny. I'm using a headband with a magnifying glass for a long time now. And when I work with small parts, it's an invaluable tool. I got used to it so much that I can't work without it anymore. After I glue all Edward Foledge cockpit parts in place, I assemble the whole cockpit together. Well, for such a huge jet, the cockpit is very tiny. The assembly wasn't without problems. Everything sits very tight together. I had to be very careful not to damage the small details. The front landing gear shaft is a part of the cockpit assembly. It's located directly under the cockpit. The front fuselage fit was quite good, but I had to use a lot of pressure as I expected. When I'm already working on the front section of the fuselage, I also assemble the radar cone and add some additional weight. When gluing, I found out that the fit is not so accurate. I'm going to have to fill it up with putty. The fuselage is modified to fit all versions of the MiG-25. Next, I assemble the two big air intakes. The intakes include lots of parts. They are nicely molded and detailed, but I have a lot of metal accessories for metallic details, so why not use them? The metal parts have excellent rivet and panel detailing. Some metal parts such as these jet turbine parts can be found in sheets of both manufacturers. I simply choose one of those that are better molded. Next, I apply a layer of surfacer, paint the air intakes with a steel color and apply a dark wash. After it's done, I assemble all air intake parts together. The fit is also very tight. Before I glued the parts into place, I had to repeat the dry fit several times. An important part of the gluing of the fuselage is also gluing the main wheel wells. Of course, I also improve them with metal parts. Now I connect the lower part of the fuselage with the front part. The connection was very difficult, and again, the fit is very tight. I had to be very careful not to break anything. 
there is a small problem. The molds are not accurate. I will have to grind and shape them. There are also large gaps on the air intakes. I will deal with these problems later. First, I complete the fuselage assembly. Next is the wings assembly. For attaching, I use my cheap Rebel modeling clamps. These tools are very helpful and reliable. There is no option for folded flaps, but I want them to be folded. It looks much cooler. Now I glue the wings to the fuselage. I also experiment with new glues like Mr. Cement SP and Tamiya Extra Thin. I like the Mr. Cement glue more. I thought that the wings fit will be better, but there is a big gap showing. It must be filled up with putty. I will come to that step later. Before that, I focused on the jet nozzle assembly and the landing gear legs. And again, I'll combine Eduard's and metallic detail photo edge parts together. I also have some resi jet nozzles for this aircraft, but comparison to this build, the assembly is a complete madness. So I will stick to the metal parts. Gluing metal parts to the landing gear legs was a bit difficult. Some metal parts were very brittle and liked to bend and break off very easily. So this work step took me more time than I expected. When I'm already working on the landing gear legs, I will add a few metal parts to landing gear covers. For comparison, on the left side is a metal part and on the right side is a gear cover from the box. Now it's time to repair the fuselage fit on the lower side. For this work step, I will use my Extol micro drill with a grinding tool, chisels and sandpaper. In this work step, I must be very careful. One mistake and I can destroy the whole fit. So I rather progress slowly.
Before filling all imperfections with putty, I glue the front cockpit canopy. For filling all gaps, I use Mr. White Putty R. I plan to fill everything. Then, I will send out the putty and continue to glue the small metal parts to the fuselage and wings. Alright, that's enough for this video. In the second part of the Foxpad build, I will focus on the jet's weapons, paint scheme, decals, weathering and much more. Thank you for watching guys and see you next time.